Greg from Cutting Edge Stencils, and we are live from Ramsey, New Jersey at the Cutting Edge Stencil Studios. I've got beautiful Carly right here. Carly, let's see you. There she is. Hey, Carly. Say hi to Carly. Um, today, we're going to talk about picking colors for your project, but before we do that, I want to introduce our giveaway. We are going to, in each episode, give away a stencil. Whatever stencil that I am working with and featuring, uh, we're going to give it away to one lucky winner. How are we going to do that? I'm going to give you some information about the subject that we're talking about during this episode. And at the end of the episode, I'm going to ask a question. And the first person to put the answer in the comments section wins this Tea House Trellis Stencil, one of our best sellers. But everyone is a winner because every day we do our episodes, we offer our featured stencil at 40% off to our viewers. So you're going to put in Tea House 40 in the coupon box at CuttingEdgeStencils.com and you're going to save 40% on the Tea House Trellis Stencil. Okay, while I'm stenciling, I'm going to talk to you about color. Oh my, where do we begin? Wow. Well, before we even start to think about picking a color for our project, I want to teach you a couple basic terms so we can speak the language of color. And basically it's this. There's three important terms. One is hue. Hue is your color. So when we talk about color, we talk about hue. Um, value is the next term. Value is how light or dark your color is. Very simple. And intensity is the third one. And intensity is how clean or dirty your color is. And listen, I can show you this right here. Can you see this on the color wheel? Uh, say the blue, for instance. The blue here is clean. It's a cleaner blue. And as we move down, uh, we also get darker here. Um, so we've also gotten dirtier, so we're less intense. For instance, like a beautiful burgundy color has a lot of brown or earth tone in it, so that is less intense. A stop sign is a bright red. That's very intense. So if we understand intensity, and it's one of the, the, the most important things to understand, uh, then you're going to have a successful uh, color selection. Because uh, just to give you a little history, uh, when I first started painting houses, in the 80s, uh, a customer came to us and they said, they looked at their Benmore chip deck and they said, oh, we want you to paint our shutters on our house this, you know, this orange or peach or cantaloupe color. And we did it. And let me tell you, it was so bright, it was the laughing stock of the road. It was so funny. Of course, he paid us to repaint it. But the, the lesson there and it took me a while to learn this lesson, is when we're selecting colors from chip decks from two square inches, they appear one way. When we take that color and we paint an entire wall, they naturally get brighter. So what you have to do when picking interior colors is you have to overcompensate for the intensity. How clean or dirty? You want to over-dirty your color. Oh, I really like this color. Well, guess what? Let's go, let's find one that's even dirtier that has more earth tone in it so it'll be safer when we multiply it on the wall. That is probably one of the biggest lessons in um, picking colors. Always go dirtier. Now, there are companies now that get into certain areas on their chip decks where they already have neutralized or reduced the intensity of the colors. This way, they'll be successful for you. And you can see how dirty these colors uh, appear. They're going to get brighter when you put them on the wall. So I'm going I'm to move here uh, a little bit while I'm preparing to paint um, this tea house trellis behind me. Uh, and I'm going to talk about how we're going to pick the colors. So the first thing I would do is I would look at the givens in a space. And what do I mean by that? I mean, what is staying? Do you have a beautiful area rug and you're working with that? 
Well, if you do, well, you've got a great starting place. You can look at the colors. You could take the major color in that. Let's again say it's just a beautiful burgundy color. You could take the major color in that and do an analogous color, which is a color that's in the family, but maybe a lighter shade. Maybe, you know, uh, the value is uh, uh, less. Maybe it's a little more intense or a little less intense. And then this way we can play with that color. Another thing you could do is you could use that major color in the carpet as your accent color in the room. Perhaps you paint the doors and the trim that color. Use it as an accent. And then you could go, say, more neutral on the wall or even complementary. Uh, complementary colors, just to give you an understanding of that, is opposite on the color wheel. Complementary, let's think of Christmas. Complementary for red is green. Blue, orange yellow, purple. These colors will always work in a sense because they're complementary. And also when you're mixing colors, what's interesting about them is they neutralize each other. I don't know how, to, how many of you guys uh, play with mixing paints and colors, but let's just say you bought a blue and it was too electric. It's too bright. Well, if you didn't want to darken that color, but I wanted to take the brightness out of it, I go opposite on the color wheel to orange, and believe it or not, you add a drop or two of orange tint or paint to this, and it will start to get dirtier. It'll start to get earthier. It'll become more palatable. So let me just pour this. Okay, I've opened a new uh, quart of paint. We love Ben Moore Ben. It's a great stenciling paint. It's a cheaper paint, but it just does everything right. I'm going to pour some on a used paper plate. I love to recycle. And I have a paper towel here, and I'm just going to clean up my edge. And I always have a garbage can. Always wipe your can, wipe the rim, keep your paints clean, allow those lids to seal nicely, know where your paint is, Look at that. I'm cleaning up. I got nothing on my hands. You can, you can really, if you pay attention and you're deliberate, you can uh, really w even work without a tarp. Um, because my rim was clean, I was able to close that lid. I do recommend uh, putting a paper towel over top and hitting it with a hammer. This way, if you have any paint in the rim, it won't spatter and splatter all over the room. Uh, so I would say this, you go, you think about the givens in your space, uh, maybe you've got drapes or maybe you've got some wooden accents or you have an accent wall in shiplap or uh, some great uh, distressed barn wood or something. These are things that will get the ball rolling and you can design from that place. Also some things to think about is, uh, you know, how is the room being used? Uh, is it a nursery? Then you probably want brighter, happier, cleaner colors. We don't want to get so earthy. We don't want to get so neutral. Um, is it a, uh, a room that you're spending less time in, like say a powder room? A powder room is a room that you usually there's a, you're not going to spend more than five or ten minutes in there. You can add a brighter, more dramatic color in there because the senses can live with that for that period of time. I wouldn't, in my family room, paint one of these really bright colors. Uh, it would be uncomfortable to be sitting in that space for a, a long period of time because uh, it actually is aggressive uh, in some way. And if we can tone those down and get dirtier and add some earth tone to these, you're going to find it much easier to be in that space. Uh, while I'm talking to you, I'm going to load this roller. Of course, uh, we clean our rollers nice, and I can use them. I love, again, to recycle. I'm not going to throw this out. Uh, I'm going to deliberately and evenly load my roller because this is the biggest mistake in stenciling is overloading your roller or brush because when you have too much paint on your roller or brush, inevitably it's going to seep underneath the edge of your stencil and give you a less than perfect edge. It's going to give you some bleed. So uh, I'm going to load this. Then I'm going to, as always, offload one or two rolls for a perfectly loaded dense foam roller. We sell these at Cutting Edge. 
Don't use anything with a big nap on it, anything uh, that's hairy. You want a nice, tight nap foam roller. Got my tea house trellis up here. Got our cutting edge stencils level. Wouldn't do an all over wall project without this. This is such a time saver. And I'm gonna start rolling our tea house as I talk to you about color a little bit more. So we've got our Gibbons. You work with that. You work with the amount of time you spend in the room. You work with the formality of the space. These are all keys to helping you pick your colors. Also, don't forget to overcompensate on how dirty your color is. It might look really dirty on this one square inch. I guarantee you put it on that wall and you start to cover, you know, 100 square feet, it's going to get more intense and brighter. I'm stenciling here. I've got medium to light pressure. I'm not pushing too hard and I'm not looking for a complete coverage in one pass. D don't do that. Take your time and slowly build up your opacity of your paint. Opacity is how translucent or solid your paint is. For instance, a stained glass window is translucent and a glass, clear glass, is transparent and solid is going to be a solid color and you'll see what I'm talking about right here as I build this up into a solid color. So, so we're going to go back to those terms for a second because I think it's good for you to understand that hue is the color itself, value is how light or dark, and intensity is how dirty or clean. Okay, now you know <clears throat> the language of color. So, I want to tell you uh, a couple of things here. Um, when you choose, when you're choosing your, your, your color for a room, I would do it this way. I'd start by my color. I would pick my hue. And then I would go to my value how light or dark I want it. And that might be determined by, am I using that space at night? Am I trying to mellow out in that space or is it a workspace? Um, you know, do I have uh, incandescent lights? How is it working? Uh, then brightness would be the last thing I would think about. Do I want it happy like a nursery or do I want it more uh, subtle like a family room? So. That is how I would begin. Go with the givens in the space. Uh, pick your color. You can also use this technique, which is uh, taking the major color in the space before. Let's say you're passing through one space to get into another, and the major color is uh, yellow, and that becomes the minor color in the space you're designing. So it could be a light purple room with a yellow accent. And this way, the rooms flow together. I kind of like a home where the spaces flow together. Okay, tea house trellis, a little tight on the borders here. I always put my piece of tape on the edge so I don't roll over the edge. I'm going to finish this up here. Okay, I'm going to ask the question now for the free tea house trellis. The rest of you go just to cutting edge stencils, put in tea house 40 and you can save 40% on this today only till midnight, Eastern Standard Time. So the color, uh, the, the question is, is what would the term be for how light or dark a color is? What is the term for how light or dark the color is? You need to type this into the comments section now. First person to do that wins a tea house trellis. What is the term for how light or dark a color is? And while we're looking for a winner, I am going to pull and reveal this tea house trellis, one of our best sellers, for a reason. You can visit us at CuttingEdgeStencils.com. See all of Jean's amazing stencils. Okay, we're going to pull this off, and I'm going to give you the answer. The answer to the question, what is the term for light or dark color? The answer is value. The answer is value. So whoever was paying attention wins this beautiful tea house trellis stencil. The rest of you are winners too because you go to cutting edge stencils, 
Put in Tea House 40 in the coupon box. Save yourself 40% today only till midnight Eastern Standard Time. It was great spending time with you today. We're going to see you next Friday live. Learn to paint and stencil with Greg Swisher. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.